We're confident that the more the people learn about the Gateway and Enbridge, the more they will see that we can build and operate this important energy infrastructure to diversify Canada's energy market in a safe, reliable, and sustainable way. It's a place of untouched beauty, the only place in the world where you'll find the majestic spirit bear. This ecosystem, known as the Great Bear Rainforest, is under threat. It's just a huge gamble for very little return. The gamble is a $5.5 billion oil pipeline called Northern Gateway to be built by Alberta-based Enbridge. It would pipe a half million barrels of bitumen from the oil sands to Kitimat, where it would be loaded onto super tankers bound for Asia. The tankers will range in size from the Aframax category, a minimum 220 meters in length, to the VLCC, up to 350 meters. Well, it's all doable. I mean, it happen not only happens here, but it happens in Norway. Authorities in Norway are struggling to contain an oil spill after an Icelandic cargo ship ran aground in the country's only marine reserve. It happens in Alaska. It sits stranded like a giant wounded animal. By this afternoon, the Exxon Valdez had leaked 265,000 barrels of oil into the waters of Prince William Sound. It happens all around the world. Oil has begun washing up on a popular beach in New Zealand's Bay of Plenty. A container ship carrying 1,700 tons of oil and toxic material grounders. Right now, stories about opposition to Northern Gateway and Enbridge are in the media every day. And I'm going to tell you, they are uncomfortable and they're sometimes frustrating. Hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil leak from a ruptured oil pipeline into the Kalamazoo River. This is a crisis that uh, should have been prevented. It was created because of negligence by Enbridge. Originally, Enbridge told us that 819,000 gallons of oil spilled into the Kalamazoo River. Today, the EPA said 1.1 million gallons has been cleaned up, and there's still more out there. Enbridge's ability to deliver on a promise is being rigorously and publicly tested as we speak. We know that that company has had a number of spills in recent years. Earlier this year in North Dakota, there was an Enbridge leak of some 126,000 gallons. There were two major spills in Wisconsin in 2007. A dozen leaks in Michigan alone. Another mess on a, a few fronts here for it's Enbridge. It's happened again. This time, it's in Illinois. Another mess for Enbridge. Hard to believe we're talking about this so soon. To weigh the pros and cons about the project, and to better assess Enbridge's approach to doing business, creating shared value in the community and being a good neighbor. Enbridge has until August 31st to clean up the rest of the oil. The EPA is confident the company will make that deadline. You may remember EPA gave Enbridge an end of the summer deadline to get all of the oil cleaned up. Not only did Enbridge miss that deadline, we just found out today the EPA has found new pockets of oil that was kind of hiding along the river, if you will, 200 acres worth. I mean, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of acres. They put this canvas over the top of it and then they plant a grass seed underneath it and this grass grows up. 150 full-length football fields of oil they didn't know was here. It's all oil mixed with mud. In the middle of the winter I brought the press out here and I fell right through. The key of course is that the discussion needs to be based on facts. It's October 9th. I just showed you the coordinates. We're at Talmadge Creek, and I'm going to just show you that they put sand over the top of the oil. Can you see how clear it is? You can see right down to the bottom, looks really clear. I'm going to take some sand. I'm going to show you real close up. This is sand. All right. See, there's no sheen. The reason why that's important is because when I dig down, the oil is underneath the sand. Coming up, it's under the sand. It's not in the sand, it's under the sand that they put there. In massive amounts. That's disgusting.
Over the course of this year and possibly into 2013, the Joint Review Panel will hear hundreds of hours of oral submissions from interveners and stakeholders as they seek to answer two fundamental questions. Will the project cause significant adverse effects on the environment? What was your, some of your symptoms that you had after um, the oil spill? I had uh, three seizures at the other house and two seizures where I live now. And then my son actually had a, uh, an episode where he looked like he was having seizures, passing out. I even took him to the ER. I got migraines. I had a seizure for the first time in my life. And is the project in Canada's public interest? Gotcha. This is why we have to stop Embridge and these oil companies from doing this. They're having seizures and there's, they're getting sick from this tar sand oil. Please help us. And I invite you to join the conversation, which you can find at www.northerngateway.ca. Uh, listen to the arguments for and against our pipeline project and judge for yourself whether Canada is ready and able to take on this important next step to join the global energy market. Thank you very much. Thank you.